Welcome back to the Breaking Bread podcast and today we have a very special announcement. After months and months of hard work, building, grinding, designing and most importantly tasting, (laughs) we're so proud to finally share with you Breaking Beans Coffee Roasters. That's right, we've started our own coffee company. Now we currently have two blends available, blonde and slender and dark and hairy. You can choose either ground or whole bean coffee. And not only that, you can choose the type of grind you want. None of this one size fits all nonsense. You could choose a grind for cafetiere, filter, aeropress, you name it. Each bag is freshly ground to order and we don't have a bunch of bags pre-packaged going stale in a warehouse. We grind for every order. If we somehow manage to make any profits from this endeavor, we're gonna put that money back into production to bring you more episodes, more guests, and more content. So if you want to support the show, this is how. And if we fail at this, well, we might have to take that sponsorship deal with the Ball Shaver Company. No, God, please, no, 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 no! Head over to breakingbreadpod.com and use the code BEARD10 for 10% off your first order. Thank you so much for your support. Now, on with this week's episode. We're back with uh, Mike Winnett for uh, for part two, since it was so heavily requested. We turn down thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every day from mad bastard crypto (laughs) opportunities. The weirdest message I've had on social media from anybody was... Um, would you shag me dressed in a Superman cape? That was it. <laughs> if we had invested the money that we'd got each from the sale uh, of the business and put it into Bitcoin on that day and then sold it on the day that you sent me the thing, we'd have had £26 million sat in our bank that day. Oh. I'm willing to get naked and start putting my balls in a sock for, <laughs> for 600 quid. You're turning down eating beans for 30 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like beans, but I'd have had a good go. I'm Bimix Food. And I'm just good, Jim. And don't adjust your sets or anything, or, well, only if you're watching. But yeah, we're in a different spot today um, because we're on the road. But um, yeah, this is the Breaking Bread podcast, in case you're wondering. And uh, we're back with uh, Mike Winnett for uh, for part two, since it was so heavily requested. How's everyone doing today? Mate, it's funny that they put you on a booster seat for that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Can we, can we cut in where we're like adjusting the mic? We've actually got these mic stands in our, in our office. In, in, in our studio, oh, but we, we tilt it down for you, honestly. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. angle mine down. You're taller than me, and he gives you shit. That's the <laughs> I, know, I don't get it, man. I, I googled like what the average height of, of English men is, and I'm one inch what? taller than the average. What is height. it? Five, five nine. Apparently, oh, I'm one inch shorter. <laughs> so, I'm a tall, short person. <laughs> How's it going, then, mate? Uh, good. Like life changing since the last podcast. Life changing. Yeah, I've got like seven new followers. <laughs> um, <laughs> You put that tweet out. You put a tweet out, didn't you say? Yeah. Can't believe it. We've done that podcast and I got seven new. You know, uh, people say don't do stuff like this, but I tell you what, if you want to grow your audience, you do <laughs> a podcast like that every month, you could be on like 700 followers in a few years or something. So yeah, yeah it's actually changed my life. Apart, no, I'll tell you what it has done. Giving me shit from Gary V super fans. That's probably the, the worst thing about it. Or funniest. Yeah. Yeah. How much, why, what would you get shit for? Loads of shit. You're using Gary V to get people to watch your channel. It wasn't even my channel, mate. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, so yeah, that's the thing. Oh, this is clickbait. It's like, how can I not talk about Gary V if I get asked a question about how did Netflix come about and what was Gary V? Uh, what was it like meeting Gary V? Can't tell you, mate, because someone on the internet might get angry about it. <laughs> so yeah, so that's I've got a t-shirt. Message. I've got a t-shirt at home that says clickbait on it and I was going to wear it today. You should, I mean, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, it was funny. Cause I was saying before we started rolling, uh, I, we got a bunch of shit last night on the Instagram from some dude, and I couldn't tell who he was angry at f- at first. I thought he was angry at Gary Vee, but it turns out he was angry at you because you were talking about Gary Vee. How dare you? Yeah, which this is what bl- blows my mind about just people in general. I think social media has now made people where it's tribal, isn't it? It's either someone's right or someone's wrong. There's no like gray area. It's like yes or no. Brexit? Are you are you for Brexit? Are you against Brexit? Vaxxer, you either have the vaccine or you're an anti-vaxxer. You can't be, oh, do you know what? I'll just wait around and I'll see how the vaccine plays out. I've had other vaccines. I'm not an yeah. anti-vaxxer. Everyone likes that extreme. Gary V is that. Gary V is Brexit and vaccines <laughs> rolled into one. And it's either like... you Clip that. Clip that. You literally, I believe everything Gary V says. What, even when he says completely opposite? Yeah, no, I agree. Everything that Gary V is saying at that moment in time. No one can think... I'll take some of the things that Gary Vee says and adapt them to what I'm doing or believe some of them. Well, that's what very the, tribal. Yeah, it's weird, because that's the first time we've, we've experienced it on any of our content because it's we're pretty beige out, really. We're I just, think it was the first time we tr- try generally to avoid, not calling people out, but I kind of mentioning people by name in um, d- 
discussions of controversy, I think. Yeah. But um, not that we do that actively or anything, but um, I think when you when you do that, you're going to wind people up, aren't you? And there's no it, need it to apologize It was funny though, because like, that clip in particular on his Instagram, it's done like 75,000 views, which is a lot, considering we've only got a couple of thousand followers. Um, you do the maths. But you said, you said like, you know, post more shit. Yeah. Which, to be fair, like that's a lot of shit that he pedals in it. Yeah, know? that is that's good advice. I would it's say. just it, it, I, I, what I say about people like Gary Vee is if you're gonna if you post that much content and you say so much random shit, eventually if you record it all, one of it's gonna be right, and you can archive that footage and go see broken, ten years a, ago. A, a broken clock is right twice a day, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Gary Vee's right once in a blue moon. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out because I don't want another thousand haters. So, you, shit. so you've not had any more backlash than that then. Uh, I had a bit of that, um, but no, not really. I would say it's probably my favourite podcast I've done to date. It didn't really feel like a podcast. That's good. Good to hear. We, we tried to keep like it relaxed. It didn't really feel like a podcast. That's yeah, a, no, it felt more thing. like like I felt just like it was just like mates chatting. Like, whereas oh, yeah, a lot of good. podcasts that I've been on or invited to, it's as if they feel like they're doing a podcast because they have to, number one. Yeah. But then they also go, Google, what are the top 10 questions to ask on a podcast? And there's no like link between what you talk about. Yeah. So it'd be like... So, tell me an interesting time uh, you went to on holiday or something like that. It's like, what's your favourite colour? It's like, how have you jumped from there to there? <laughs> That's Whereas, how ill-prepared I think I am. I've never, I've never thought to Google best questions to, to ask. Yeah. No, obviously I do a lot. You ask none of them, by the way. I do a little <laughs> bit of pre-production. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's the, that's the appeal of it. Like, I mean, me and Adam have got nothing to lose from doing the podcast. We do it for a bit of fun, so we want it to be... Speak for yourself. What? This is my brand. Well, you've got everything to lose. I've got nothing to lose, but... Yeah, we enjoy it, and I'd want the guests to enjoy it. Like we've been on—I mean, we've been—I've been on a few podcasts. I've been with you to a couple, well, some podcasts, and it felt pretty forced. Like you said, you go through the traditional interview questions, and you're like, "Do you know he's lost it already on podcasts?" Stephen Bartlett. And yeah. People say like he's got the best podcast going at the moment. I would say I would argue, not because he was actually interviewing interesting people that were CEOs to start yeah. with, and already he's now moved into like just guests that I know are going to get views. He started to chase guests rather than finding interesting people that you might not have heard about before. And I fell victim to that with my own podcast, I think. So I had uh, Not Another Dickhead with a podcast, yeah. podcast. Uh, <laughs> what, have you, did you not know that? What a name. <laughs> not Another yeah, Dickhead was, with a podcast. Yeah, so that was because everyone had a podcast, right? So <laughs> as a piss take, I was like, oh, Not Another Dickhead with a podcast. Um, and weirdly, we went into podcast production after that. So we wanted all the dickheads that wanted a podcast to come and use us, but that's another story. Uh, but... Um, Series one, I just invited people that weren't really well known, but I liked or were interesting, and I had a better conversation with those people. Series two, I looked for, oh, Ollie Ollerton, he's got a book coming out. We'll try and get him on, or yeah. you know, different people that were sort what you'd see as sort of celebrities or bigger audiences. Number one, it didn't equate to bigger views, and number two, it was like you were chasing the guests, not interesting people anymore, and it yeah. became a bit formulaic and. They didn't really want to push it either because they were doing the rounds on podcasts. So I would, hate, I would hate that. I, I said to you when we started, we're not just, I'm not just getting, you know, YouTubers on and whatnot. People that I think are entertaining for whatever reason. Yeah. They don't even have to be in the public eye in any way for me. And some of the best, the best guests we've had are, apart from Mike, um, people that, that people that you don't aren't, know. Yeah, they're not maybe household names. Probably the most famous bloke we had on was. Uh, Danny from Rate My Takeaway. It's early days though. We'll improve he's on that. Done, he's done <laughs> massive numbers, by the way. So his audience must be really engaged. I saw his numbers on your channel. Oh yeah, he's um, he has got a good audience there. They've, yeah. they've done really well what they've done there. Danny's a nice guy, and he's, he's yeah, a, he's a, he's a, great, he's a he? nice guy. And they were they were pumping out some videos like when he went viral back in lockdown because he went up to I think it was like Newcastle and said you know I've had a curry, I've had a curry at my <laughs> nan's house. What's going on over there? All oh, right, yeah, no worries. <laughs> keep it in, keep Feel it free to keep it on silent. Yeah, um, yeah he, um, he he went and did like yeah, a curry at Manan's house and it went viral. And then but his, him and his team were peddling out what, it felt like two or three videos a day, but they, they were lot, posting yeah. daily, Yeah, which is mental, isn't it? But that, that you know, yeah. the, they did ride that wave. So um, how much money was he making from that? Because there's, there's a misconception that you make loads of money well, on views. And, I suppose. And, um, or is that right? The, we, are, the, the, we should probably give a bit of back. Yeah, we dive straight in the yeah, deep straight, sorry, sorry, folks. Those that are listening, we are going to do a podcast on influencers. And we've done a similar one about brand deals in the past, but we want to talk about like influencer mm. culture because that's how we ended the last podcast. You said, oh, man, I've got some stories about influencers. Let's do a part two. Here we are. Um, but yeah, Daniel have been, I mean, I, I dare. It's, there's so many variables to say yeah. how much. It depends on how many hours you, 
spamming it in the middle, you know, I don't know how many ads they put on, on you know, mid-rolls um, and, and stuff like that. It's, there's too many variables to say how much the CPM, I don't know what his CPM is and stuff no, like that. He, he, he were doing like hundreds of thousands of views a video, weren't he? Yeah, I mean, there was a, there was a, I've not seen, I've seen very few channels grow that rapidly. Yeah. For, especially for a person that ostensibly doesn't follow any of the rules, you know, have a nice thumbnail, uh, you know, do, it, there was nothing that felt fake about him, you know? Do you think that's why it works though? Because yeah. it's almost like, because I think once everyone starts following the best advice and everyone starts looking and sounding and feeling the same, yeah. the person doing the absolute opposite of that probably stands out. So in a weird way, the best advice would be to like, do nothing like you see out there already. That, it, yeah, 100%. You, definitely. But it's kind of weird with Danny's and we said this to him and I've said, we've said it on and off air. Because it's so raw, it's almost like anyone could make that. Con like, so obviously, it takes a level of skill to make what Adam makes because of the style that it is. You've got then the Mr. Beast. Do you make it? Are you are. Do you make Does it? Fuck no, people think I'm joking. It, people yeah, do think that I do. If you made it, like people see my actual skin tone, I put like a little bit of a fake CGI color yeah. grade tan. He, put, on. he puts himself a tan on, and Mrs. Beard looks like one of the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> like, <it's laughs> yeah. Um, Beard we'll meets that. jaundice. Oh yeah. So there's the. Um, you talk about the quality of what the Mr. Beard, Mr. Beast, Mr. Beard, Mr. Beast style content where it's like proper jumpy. So and everyone, that. everyone copies that now. Yeah. We've talked but then about like before. you've got Danny's and rate my takeaway, and it's like. It's like your nan's done it. They've got yeah. I just saw him like set up a little thing like outside, like on the street, and he starts eating just outside. Yeah, but single, it, like single shot, like it's single, like it's on a phone on a gimbal, and it just, it's like thirty minutes. He actually yeah. said, didn't he, that he got ne neg a negative response when he tried to make because he has a videographer who I think probably can accomplish something that's a bit more polished. But yeah. he said I think he did one or two videos like that, and people hated it. And I think there's a shift on YouTube actually as well now that they're they're trying to encourage to compete with TikTok and whatnot, people to just on the fly shoot, you know, yeah. rather than do a full full-scale production but i don't know you're right. i reckon though if he actually but uh, you said he got a backlash for trying to up his production levels and become a bit more polished than that i reckon he'd get a backlash if he lost weight because that's what people like on the internet it's like yeah oh look you're now trying to conform that isn't the person we liked i know a couple of warrington youtubers and now they've started to make a bit of money all their og fans don't like it because they've now introduced brand deals and ads and stuff like that. they eat certain sweets when they're driving the cars around which they're obviously sponsored by and that <laughs> shit like that so <laughs> He got loads of shit. He got some backlash for his weight though, didn't he? And like, and for posting so much and eating so much food. And he actually went into detail on the podcast about why yeah. like he, they only have like a mouthful of food. He only has like a couple of mouthfuls and he gives it to the cameraman or whatever. Yeah. But he was getting shit because they were saying you're eating too much. And then he's like, oh, if I throw it away. But it's like, what do you think this channel is about? It's yeah, yeah. like, rate my takeaway. There's the clues there. What do you think he was going to do? Like <laughs> go there and not eat it, not eat and then give a rating for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just yeah. people are dicks in the comments on YouTube, apart from your audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've dragged over the, uh, the the slums. So you might find this interesting, but do you know Chris Williamson from the Modern World, uh, Modern Wisdom podcast? I don't know him. Well, he was, I think he was like the first contestant on Love Island. So he was in Love Island before you became famous for being on Love Island. Yeah. So he left the Love Island islands getting binned off and he got like 3,000 followers on social media and this was before he got brand deals or whatever yeah. anyway he said the first time he did a piece of content that broke through his core audience it introduces like a proper crazy split tribal uh, crowd so he says so the first time you do something that kind of goes viral you lose or you leave your safe zone mm -hmm. And that's I think that's, that's probably that's what's true. happened with that Gary Vee clip it, if oh, it's totally, done 75,000 yeah, yeah. yeah. it's been seen by people that don't know who I am don't know anything about you guys. So to them, it's just, this is an attack on Gary Vee. Yeah. I don't know the backstory. I don't want to know about it. I can't be asked researching it. I don't know who these guys are. So that's what happens once you leave, so unless you grow slowly and organically. Yeah. So but You see that all the time, don't you? Yeah, especially with the, Facebook's a, is, is a wild, is, is a wild arena, you know, because I, if I put, a, just re-edits, you know, that I, because I know some people don't watch on YouTube, right? They, just, they can't bother clicking and moving, you know, moving away from the platform. Um, so I put videos on Facebook and obviously I run ads on those as well. But because, you know, okay, people that follow my page will watch it, they'll then share it or like it or comment on it. And then their friends will see who aren't necessarily into what I do. They might be the, the entire opposite. And you get people going going crazy about you know, all, all kinds of stuff. But I, th I find that really entertaining. I don't care if they like me or not. Yeah, because like you get, you get that crowd of Facebook's amazing. Like, because my granddad's on Facebook, right? And my, my missus, she's got a folder on the phone where, you know, like Gary Vee's folder. Yeah. She's got a folder on the phone <laughs> screenshotting my granddad's comments on random shit, you know, like, 
a dog that's gone like missing in Mexico and it's like, <laughs> oh, I hope you find it. <laughs> or, you know, like there's a boat in the Atlantic that's sinking. It's like, fucking hell, it's like the Titanic. Thinking that like they know these people. You shouldn't have Facebook. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree with you. You yeah. shouldn't have Facebook, but that's that's the people that you've got. Does this generation have, when I say this generation, I mean like the ones younger than us, do they even bother with Facebook now? It, it's, it's, it's a 30 plus thing, isn't it, Facebook, surely? I guess so. I think the only, I mean, I, I don't even really use it for, for like personal reasons. I would never use it. No. Messenger, maybe. Maybe they use it for that, but they probably use, I don't know, WhatsApp and Snapchat get, and stuff. I probably shouldn't say this, but do you get like a message requests? I found yeah, a, I, I found the message request folder on my personal Facebook the other day, and it was stacked with people like asking me random questions. What lens should I get for this? Oh, what really? camp- oh yeah. There's, like, there's like a hidden request section. Yeah. And it's just stacked with people going, like whether it's on about podcasts or. Ah, uh, so that's interesting. So some people might think that their favorite influencer uh, or celebrity is ignoring them, but yeah, they might yeah. not even have seen you, that message. You see the request folder folder. on Instagram. But you get that like Instagram's yeah. difficult. That's coming through on you. You effectively your, your business page or your kind of public facing page but i get them on like my personal i don't know how the you must have the hell people women that like like want to see you eat beans and shit like that no i, I don't get beans. i never get messages from women that's just kind of a sad thing yeah you said look off long long you can put some cricket noise in the background <laughs> but um yeah no i never get um nudes or anything like that sadly but um yeah i get it on my personal to the point now that like my personal facebook page the i've removed the profile picture so it's just like a black circle yeah. Because I don't know how people find it. I, th- I thought I've like set all my private privacy yeah. settings so that only my friends could interact with me and stuff. Um, but yeah, people find it and mess me with stuff like, um, I don't know, can you eat baby food topless? That, I did get a message asking me to do that. But actually two or three. I wish you get paid for that. I don't know. I would, I'd, I'd, I'd want three figures. <laughs> three, say the, no, three figures. the weirdest message I've had on social media from anybody was, um, would you shag me dressed in a Superman cape? That was it. That was a that was a whole was message. Like, would you shag me wearing a Superman cape? And it thought that's proper weird kind of request to make someone. I feel like that that's and or one of the person it was a lad actually said to me, um, he'd like to go for a drink f- with me in London because I was in London actually, and he uh, said, I, I I don't know you. Like, why would I, <laughs> I would, like I've not got time to meet my own friends that I know in London, let alone people I don't know. And he was like, generally this was his response. Um, I mean, I didn't want you to bum me or anything, <laughs> right? <laughs> And I said, I said, replying stupidly. I don't know why. I was like, no, I, I, I didn't think that's what you did mean. And he went, but if you wanted to, that'd be all right as well, you know. <laughs> like that. And I was like, oh no, like um, I'm married. Yeah. I was married at the I, time. That reminds me. I had a, um, a request from I, I you know, because I've, I've done a couple of trips like out to America and whatnot, and I'll get people sometimes saying, oh, you know, if you need a place to crash, and I'm like, thanks for being polite, but. You know, I'm probably not going to stay at a person's house. I don't know. Um, I get Ted Bundy. You know, I, 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 I think it's it's all right to say that. But one person, I said, you know, thanks for the, the offer, but I'll probably just stay in a hotel. You know, it's a business trip for me. It's deductible. And they're like, well, there's only for that. I'm trying to offer you. And they, they were really angry that I just kind of quite politely declined, you know. And I thought that was a bit strange. I mean, I, I'm glad I didn't end up at that house. God knows what that could have been like house of wax. It is strange. Um, but like, I think on the flip side... If you if you know, if you've got like a, an influencer or a creator that you enjoy watching and you get that personal connection as as a as a viewer, so you automatically assume that like the, the warmth would come back straight away and be like, oh, you know, this might happen. Where really you just you are a human being at the other side going, fuck no, I don't want to stay at a family member's house. Like I, I don't want to stay at a, a stranger's house. I think know? if they're rational, like if, if if somebody says to you, love the videos, mate. Um, can you recommend a restaurant in Leeds? I'm like, yeah, yeah, thanks for watching, bud. But if it's Love your videos, mate. Do you want to sleep on my couch? <laughs> <laughs> it's not Fancy a bum. Do you remember that? What, what yeah. program was that on? On the TV? Uh, yeah. Balls of Steel. You probably, yeah, you probably couldn't do that now. No, you definitely With cancel couldn't. culture. He said it to, uh, he said it, uh, it's like meatloaf. He went onto red, red carpet. It's Fancy a bum. Chris Miles. Chris Miles was like, yeah, come on, let's crack on. He did it as a joke, but... Yeah, that, there's no way that TV Well, this guy was. that offered me the bum that I declined and then said, like, <laughs> if you want to, uh, he said, I said, like, oh, I'm married. I've got a, a wife. And he went, oh, I thought you were spaghetti. What's that, that mean? Like, What's that? Uh, straight until I warm you up was his actual, was his actual response. Good. I was like, that's quite good. So that must be a term. Let us know in the comments if that is a term thrown around. Unless, of course, we cut this entire section. Yeah. It's mad that this is going to be his last episode, really. <laughs> yeah. <isn't it? laughs> okay. Who but, you? but yeah, so spaghetti was what gay people call straight people. They think that they could, under a couple of beers, they could influence into not being so straight. And that's what it's known as. We need to, we, we should um, get like a, was it a, not a dictionary. 
I was glossary? Like an urban, a glossary, yeah, of, of all these random terms. Because like you come out with some shit all the time that's not that wild, but like an Urban Dictionary style. Well, you, it did, it, Josh didn't understand Jaffa. We're on the way here, right? <laughs> Little side tangent. I'm often pressured by um, not only Mrs. Beard to impregnate her, but followers now, quite in quite high number. Like, when are you going to impregnate I'm like, G give it a rest, you know? It's my personal life. Um, but I said, how do they know I can do it? You know, I could be a Jaffa. And Josh didn't know that's... Yeah, I've never heard that before. Seedl uh, a seedless orange? Seedless. I might not be able to oh, yeah. impregnate no, it, it I thought sense, that was like a common thing, Jaffa, no? No, no. Well, I've got quite a... What's the word? Uh, an exotic lexicon, probably. <laughs> a Jaffa. Um, yeah, so we'll, we're talking about influencers, but it turns out, <laughs> a bit of research, that now we're on second time round, that you were an OG influencer back in 2006, because did you almost become... Do not. Like, Ian said this. <laughs> did you almost become <laughs> Mr. Why. Warrington? Oh, uh, look at that. Yeah, well, what that a beautiful like man. You're, you're auditioning for like a really naff blue cover band. Yeah. I mean, blue the, Turquoise. the, the, the group. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what did Ian say then, like? Uh, long story short, like I moved to Warrington in like 2006 and I didn't know anybody in the town. And my mum sent in a picture of me to become Mr. Warrington. She'd read it in the, <laughs> read it in uh, the local newspaper. So yeah, that's it. And I absolutely get pelters about that in two places, work and the football WhatsApp group that I, for the team I play for. <laughs> so yeah, I thought that had been uh, resigned to history. Yeah. That picture, but it's suddenly made a resurgence the last sort of three, four months. <laughs> it's weird because you send it to me weekly and you're like, please bring it up, please bring it up. So do we need to cut that section out then or can we keep that in? We'll keep it in. Sorry. <laughs> I think you look well. Hey, you're only, you're only putting that out there for clickbait reasons. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, so that was the time I nearly became Mr. Warrington. I think I was just, my picture was put in the newspaper and I didn't make it any further than that. So I didn't even make it top 50, I don't think. Ah. There's only, there's only 40 blokes in one. <laughs> <laughs> no dates then or all, you know? Uh, no, I had, I moved to Warrington and had a girlfriend at the time when I first moved here. Uh, I f dumped her about a week after getting here, to be honest. But Fair play, fair play. Well, like, I had a girlfriend all the way through uni, which was a pointless exercise. Why would you do that? It's like bringing sandwiches I've only, yeah, to an I've all you one, one, one girlfriend ever. Yeah, I'm still with her now. Ah, yeah. Do you Beyond believe that? Now. No, I'm, yeah, mm. of course, man, look at me. Come on, this is uh, this. I, I do not conform to most. You didn't uh, look like that in school, though, types. surely. No, I didn't. I didn't have. A, I did have a, a hair. Did you rate it? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> monogamy at its finest over there. Yeah, you're like a penguin. Penguins are monogamous for life, aren't they? Is that true? Yeah, I think so. But, All right, but, but how can coerced, actually, how coerced they know monogamy. That? You're not true. Having an interview, am I? Oh, have you ever cheated on your missus? <laughs> uh, <laughs> how do they actually know that? And they all look the same anyway. So, True. yeah, fair one. So, on uh, influencer marketing, I thought best was we'd start with uh, physical Instagram posts because we, we did a, we actually did a, an episode on um, how much does beer get paid? Is that what we called it? I don't remember that one. Like that. How much? Oh no, we did we, we did one about how how much y you might get offered for like brand deals and stuff, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, and it had a quite good response because you know I know you do it for a living, but we are trying to open up the. Uh, the audience to what it's actually like on the flip side. People don't know, do they? No, That's like the it's so unknown. The whole marketing world's just unknown, I think, to a lot of just consumers. Because imagine if you're not in marketing, like my missus ain't got a clue. She thinks that if she gets a Facebook ad for a jumper, like I need to buy that jumper, I'll click on it and then it comes back again and comes back again until she buys it. And I'm like, yeah, that's the idea of it. Oh, it's so weird. I was only looking at that jumper yesterday and now <laughs> it's everywhere I go. Oh, what are the chances? What are the odds? I was going to say, the funny thing about that was when we released that episode um, about that particular offer that was given, like three days later, some, another creator in the same space had done it. Remember? I told you. Who? Stoney had done it. Remember? Oh, of course. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It was the biggest creator in the in like the eating space. Yeah, so we, we mentioned um, a post that Adam were going to do, uh, or got offered to do, which was like a zombie apocalypse game. Yeah. Right? So it was like, the, the long story short, people, if you've listened to the podcast, you would have heard this before, but there's this game, I don't really game much, right? At all. But... um this game coming out called Dying Light 2 and they offered me 30 grand, right? 30,000 GBP to do like a, a themed video around this game. Right so the, the full video would have to be about it. Yeah, so it was yeah, basically yeah. like, and it would have been an easy video to be fair. I said I was actually out of the country or I might have actually done it because that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, but it was like, what would you eat in a zombie apocalypse? I'm thinking I'd just eat cans of beans to be fair. Just yeah. go get some like Heinz beans or pound stretcher beans or something, just own brand, eat them out of the cans. Yeah. Um, but I didn't do it. But yeah, after we put that podcast up, um, probably the biggest, you'd have to say the biggest 
and I mean, this isn't a criticism, uh, but like Matt Stoney, he, he did he did that video. Yeah, he, he did it. You know, he did it really well actually. But um, question: Do you reckon they offered him the same amount of money as what they offered no. you, or more? More. Yeah. I mean, like Stoney, you could sneeze and get two million views. You know, so it would have been more. But I mean, I was astounded they would offer me thirty thirty thousand quid. That's mad for 30, one video. Yeah. Yeah, but but there'll be people thinking, oh, for like three minutes work, four minutes work. But obviously, there's lots of extra work that goes into it, researching it, scripting it, storyboarding it, editing it. So, what? How long do you think it would have actually taken you to make that a week? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, if it's the still edit time still a good gig though, eh? Yeah, it was, I, I can't complain. <laughs> I mean, but that's the first time I've ever been offered anything like that. I would never quote anyone that. You know, if somebody, I, I mean, I don't do sponsored videos, but if, if you ask me to say, oh, I've got this brand, can we do that? I can see you've got like a joke coming no, out of no, my No, 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 <laughs> no. I, for, I think it might have been 600 quid. Um, put a cock, uh, put a sock <laughs> over my cock for a, a, for a brand video. I remember seeing that. Sponsorship. Yeah, so I'm on a different world to you. <laughs> I'm willing to get naked and start putting my balls in a sock for, for 600 quid. You're turning down eating beans for 30 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like beans, but I'd have had a good go. There's probably some middle ground there. That's a proper spectrum. Yeah, pick but. a pocket it was called. And they'd gone from just doing uh, pocket squares and ties into socks. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, sound. Well, like, that, was on the, that was on the crypto mining episode, wasn't it? Yeah. Did they drive it into the cock region or was that your suggestion? Well, I'll be honest. They just said like, you know, you're the creative. You come up with an idea of how can you get this product into your video? And I was like racking my brain thinking, how to make it look like it's part of the video and not like an ad. And I don't know if you've had crypto mining rigs. Oh yeah, before. I've got five at home. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> so, so, so the fucking roasting, right? Yeah. So, I said in the video, sometimes it gets so, before buying one of these machines, consider um, how hot it's going to be. Um, sometimes it gets so hot in here, the only other thing I wear on my bottom half is socks, and then it pans down, and I've got a sock <laughs> over my cock, and, and then it <laughs> falls off, one. and then it comes up with their brand. Yeah, that's, so. that's, that's an organic way to do it, I think. If you're going to do that, I think people are a bit more receptive to you being creative. I mean, I didn't follow up and say, how many pairs of socks did you sell? <laughs> of you know what's a bad thing about that? Like, So we were saying that one way in, we'll talk about it later in the podcast, but as you sort of like, I guess as you sort of coming up and you're trying to grow your audience, you're trying to grow what it is that you're trying to do, yeah. you sort of take shit gigs or you'll take... You'll do what you, you do what you can to survive, don't you? To, to sort of break through. Yeah, to make sure you've got enough money to be making a video in a month's yeah. time or whatever, yeah, of course. But you've already... <laughs> Scale sold and exited the business <laughs> for millions of pounds, and you then for six hundred quid put in a sock. Oh, this was after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, Good was Lord. this was like a couple of years ago. Yeah, so, <laughs> all right, so let me tell you on this, right? So, uh, spoiler alert: if you invest all of your money in get rich quick um, opportunities that flash up to you on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, you won't have much of that money left a year down the line. So, yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to send me six hundred quid, I'll put anything on my cock. <laughs> Um, there's so much irony you know, in, in all of that <laughs> yeah no no so yeah so uh, yeah no it was just it was a revenue stream I don't even think the channel was monetized at that point or ah, maybe so it you was got, you got me doing brand gigs then um, but yeah so but I favoured weirdly um, doing adverts that I could control and put into my YouTube videos myself as yeah. in it's part of the video rather than getting random videos assigned to me by Google yeah. Some people might not know that, that actually the videos on our, sorry, the adverts on our videos, we don't pick them. No. Yeah. We YouTube and Google pick them. Because that was some of the backlash from the last podcast that we put out that we were getting entrepreneurs or what uh, what could be perceived yeah. as entrepreneurs putting adverts on our videos. But that's because of the, the tags that you use and the words that you use. Uh, YouTube then goes, ah, oh, right, you're talking about Gary V, get rich quick, or building a business. So we're going to put adverts from this pot on that that video so but another way of looking at it is we're hurting them because we're actually taking money from their ad spend on an audience that won't believe that shit yeah. and click those adverts so good you can dress it up that way if you want to well i guess that, well on on this topic then and we'll talk about your channel and and paid advertising um one did you get any backlash from your audience for having sponsored segments within your videos because like that's a tough sell i think as a as a a creator to a business to say sponsor my video even though i'm going to be trashing other businesses do you know what i mean like it's, yeah. a, it's quite a so no like i we what we actually try to do is make a feature of it so we did uh, a collab or we were sponsored by uh, future present yeah which um basically tarts up your powerpoints if i want a better phrase so you might have powerpoint your shit you go to them and they turn it into like a proper 
decent PowerPoint. So it was good for like business people doing meetings and presentations and stuff, right? I'm not being sponsored for this bit. Um, <laughs> however, so what are you looking at? <laughs> I'm looking for a sock under the table. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so what we used to do for them is we could easily put that into the entrepreneur bingo because a lot of it was um, entrepreneurs doing really shit presentations and they would have really shit PowerPoint presentations, really shit slides. Or they, they, we did one with Ty Lopez trying to pull off a, a, yeah. a piece of paper. It? Yeah, a piece yeah. of paper, and he couldn't he couldn't manage to do it. So it was easy to put them into the point where people look forward to how we could get that into the video. And another thing we also incorporated in the same kind of way was subscribing to the Mike Winnett YouTube channel. It was at what point were we going to shoehorn that in? Because we'd do that in quite a funny way. So uh, there wasn't much backlash from those types of adverts. Like I said, yeah. where we could, could, could control the creative and what went on the video and where it was placed in the video. I did get some backlash for exactly the same reasons what you've said over ads that I couldn't control. So when I was getting Grant Cardone advertising on my videos or Brian Rose advertising on my videos, a video absolutely trashing Grant Cardone and Brian Rose, I got lots of backlash from that. Like, well, you're just doing the same thing. You're making money from entrepreneurs. But um, I just put it down as people are dicks. <laughs> you got up. I think it's, it's mad to me that people don't understand that. And it's like, like you've bit, chose that. Ad yeah, people say to me, they'll be like, oh, it's, it. it's so funny that you put a slim fast ad on, uh, ad it's a slim fast ad on the front of this video. And I'm like, I, I don't choose it. It's it's, it's a, an amalgam of things uh, as well as your own search history, right? They're, they're tailored ads. That's the whole point. The big, the biggest pain ad on YouTube is the ones tailored to your search history and stuff because it knows that you're gonna what you're gonna want to buy potentially and stuff like that. So you can um, businesses can choose the channel that they want to um, put an ad on though as well. So like yeah. then businesses could look at you and say, "Beer meets food. I want I want to make sure I've got that spot." On your channel, yeah, but I mean, from the creator's perspective, we, you just yeah, you, click, you, monetize, yeah, don't as a you? creator, you've got no idea. Like, yeah. you, you don't know who's, who's paying. You for just kind of yeah, hope but, that Google. But does your, the job. and this is why yeah. I go back to like saying your audience are being tribal. That part of people that, that that group of people that watch your content and just hate you and just are going to disagree with anything that you say, it's just something for them to have a go at you. At. Even though logic, you know, you could say, well, we don't choose our own adverts. Yeah, that doesn't matter. It's, this is something to beat you over the head with, and that's why they'll always do it. So I, I would still get that shit on my um, content even now. But yeah, but I liked doing stuff where on LinkedIn was where we used to get most of our uh, people that wanted to sponsor our YouTube videos. And because they were businesses and knew the business side of what we did, they would say, hi, Mike, I, I've got Pick a Pocket as a company that I've got. I'm just about to launch something with socks. I trust you to put this in your video. Like you can go crazy with the creative I do like those types of collabs. Yeah. But equally, you should see some of the shit that me and Ian get in our inbox asking us to promote stuff. And it's stuff that goes against everything we do, but they look at it as you're the entrepreneur guy. If we can align our um, cryptocurrency or our NFT, oh, NFT collection or, with uh, your channel, yeah, yeah. yeah, or your course, that looks like we've got a pass and we've passed the, and we turn down thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every day from mad bastard crypto like <laughs> opportunities that'd be, one. that'd be a good one what would be the the logo for that one but yeah so it's, it's, it's always it's always like weird shit like that they're the ones that don't sit right with me and it's interesting that you would turn down an opportunity with someone because it doesn't sit right we turn down we've probably turned down more money in ad revenue and potential opportunities than we've actually accepted yeah oh yeah by yeah. a mile i mean i, I have by a mile. i mean and then it comes to like do you have principles? What are your own ethics? Like, you know, would you have done it if they put a bigger figure, if they put a zero on the end, would you have done it? And, you know, ev everything's got a price, hasn't it? But there's something about crypto and something about courses and entrepreneurs that I wouldn't want to promote and get paid to do it. Yeah. Like, weirdly, I had Success Resources once contact me, just as a, a like slight aside, asking how can we work together? You come to our events, you take the piss out of our events, you take the piss out of... Uh, the people that we have on stage, how can we work together so this doesn't happen again? And I just said, just watch my videos and there's all the concentration you need. Just stop, him, stop getting these people at your events. Like, I'm not going to work for you or with you. That's a way that it's like... Um, like, how can we bring you in-house so you, you leave us alone type thing, which yeah. is mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But I suppose if you can turn an enemy into a friend, like if they, if they could have thrown, thrown some coin at you to say, come and do just do your... your your bits there, yeah. then, they'd, then they would have not, your audience wouldn't have taken you seriously. Yeah. You're off their plate. What? So is that the highest one you've ever been offered? What's the sort of regular 
Um, I thought you were going to ask me the lowest because that's 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 in the cache. Oh. I always get the turkey based one, or the turkey. Well, you'll get one. Do you, want, do you want a free microphone if you can do a six minute video on this? It's like, fuck uh, off, I, man. My, the worst one I've got is, is way worse. That, that, the, I keep bringing up the meat the moment. I, 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 <laughs> periodically, I get this from the same company. They'll be like, can you do that? Bear in mind, I don't do reviews, right? Of any nature. They'll be like, can you do a video reviewing our meat thermometer in exchange for a free meat thermometer, which costs, what, 17 quid? And I don't think I've ever used a meat thermometer in my life. Like, is, is that a joke? Like, I mean, but you've got to know like, that that's not going to, I'm not going to do that, right? It's I mad mean, that they think that that's a fair exchange of not realizing like the equipment, the time, the scripting, the editing, the storyboarding, the, even uploading it. It probably costs you more than 17 quid in the hour it takes to upload to YouTube. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's offensive. Yeah. I'm sure I put, I put a LinkedIn post up about that once and it did. It, it went far because I, I, I replied with, with that. Like, I, it's a 300 quid microphone, for example. This is exactly how long it takes. So like hourly, it would cost me this much to make it. Yeah. What planet do you think that we're on that I'm going to make that video? Which makes me think, are there actual influencers, creators out there that okay those deals? Yeah, there must, must be. be. Yeah. Or do you think they're all just chancing their arm and they're just proper taking the piss? There's, I think there's two sides to it as you're coming up because there's the, the side that it looks good because you've been sponsored. So there's like... And it's free content. So, like, if you're in that, I were in that niche for a bit as far as like uh, reviewing. Like I was sort of like showing people how to make videos and reviewing certain equipment. But I would just, I were only showcasing what I've got that I'd already paid for, and then I'd put a link in the description where it's an Amazon affiliate, so I'd get a kickback. Yeah. So you get that eventually build up a little bit of revenue from that, and then people would start offering you stuff. Um, so it does kind of look good, and it's free content. If you're like racking your brains thinking, "Oh, what should I make this week?" If you get this in your inbox, and you're like, "Oh, it looks half decent," yeah, make it, but. Would you say that you use something if you didn't really use it, but you've been paid to do that? Because no. I know a creator um, who does illustrations and she was approached by, um, I can't remember what company it was. It might have been like, say it's Samsung and it's like to use their tablet and say you do. <laughs> careful, do, careful. Might not have been but, Samsung. But do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Do you do these designs? Insert any brand there, but, yeah. but it's like, say you use this, even though you use this to design it and we'll, we'll pay you. Just say that you design all your stuff on this. And um, they turned it down because they felt uncomfortable about it. But it, it makes me wonder how many people do that. And I can imagine anyone that's from Love Island would literally, you could throw anything at them and they would just We've say, had that discussion many times before. Like they the would say, oh yeah, yeah, I use charcoal toothpaste. Never yeah. used it once in their life. But yeah, this is why my teeth look so white. Any, you know I mean? Like anything that I think sacrifices your integrity. I mean, that's that says that you are for sale to me, you know? Like, the thing you can't get me... Like, you can't... I'm not going to put a, a cock on my... Not, I'm judging you, Mike, but I'm not putting a, a sock on my cock for 600 quid. But there are things that you that you couldn't pay. So if you say, lie Hold for on. this money, I'm not going to do it. These were 100% organic cotton. <laughs> you, you're, still on the, you're still on the payroll. <laughs> no, no. Uh, my next question we're going to be, what uh, what's the most you've been paid for a brand deal? Um, 600 square oh. Oh, I can't really say because the person that paid for it probably didn't get the result he wanted. So, All right. That's not your yeah. fault, is it? Uh, no, no. So someone paid me 15 grand to sponsor, to have a six second advert on 10 videos. Right. Um, six second ad? Yeah, yeah. Matt what can you say in six seconds? Ask Vine. Not much, otherwise they'd still be around. Uh, oh, Vine, yeah. No, I no, so it, wasn't, it wasn't Vine. So yeah, so someone just wanted, basically at the beginning of every one of our podcasts for a series to... <laughs> promote their youtube channel yeah essentially so it was like six seconds oh, if you like what i'm doing um, oh yeah i remember blah, that blah, blah, yeah, yeah. yeah i forget his name i said yeah, yeah. that's how good the that's how good the <laughs> promotion was you forgot his name brilliant yeah but it were like it were like a brands that want to work with me in the future and you don't want to be remembered in six months time <laughs> get in touch <laughs> uh, yes yeah, so um so we did a thing for, it was 15 grand and it essentially it was a minute's worth of advert yeah on our and obviously it would be on social clips as well and it'd be like click here at the end but that was 15 grand for 10 episodes. And we also did an episode with him where we in introduced him, uh, sorry, interviewed him. Yeah. And um, that episode never came out because at the time he was sort of having a bit of a legal back and two with somebody that he was talking about. And we just thought it was probably better for everyone not to put that video out. Right. So that was probably the most we've got paid for a single uh, deal. A, yeah. So that it literally, it was the same six second advert just on, on yeah. uh, 10 videos. So yeah. And he, he didn't see that the return they expected. Well, no, well, I mean, I, I'm saying he didn't get what he paid for as in his episode never came out. So yeah. that was part of the deal, but his channel grew, his right. profile grew. So he got, he wanted to be seen by my audience. So yeah. he got what he wanted out of it. But in terms of actual, you know, for me, it wasn't the best. 
it wasn't the best uh, partnership that I've done. Fair play. The one that I actually liked the most was probably Future Present, purely for it fit perfectly in that content. So it was, um, you wouldn't, it didn't even feel like an advert. I think people react, that, that for, especially for the, for the brand as well, those are the best kind if they can let you have kind of free reign because people, it's going to seem more organic. Like yeah. I've, I've worked with it maybe back when I used to do sponsored placements and stuff. I've, I've done, there are some brands which are good in that respect and they'll be like, yeah, you be creative. Give us a, you know, check over. Yeah. Give us a draft. But if you can, you know, make a bit of a gag out of it, then people are going to be a bit like, oh, yeah, I'm not really being sold to you, even though they know you've been paid for it. So I think if, but I mean, that th those are dying out now. It's, it's usually bullet points. We need every single one of these boxes checked. Yeah, um, and I think they're shooting themselves in the foot because you could probably do a better job than the stuff that they want you to do yeah. half the time. I, I hate it. Even in, so talk about Mr. Beast. Um, he did obviously his Squid Game um, video, which is, is that the most viewed? It was like the fastest views, yeah, to like 50 million views. Yeah, it's got more massive. views than the actual TV series on Netflix. Yeah. Right? But then that would be because parents would probably let their kids watch that version of it rather than the, yeah. the uh, Netflix version. But um, that was sponsored. Obviously, it cost an absolute fortune to make. But like, I didn't like the sort of two minute bit in the middle where it was just talking about that, the game that had sponsored it and stuff. It felt like, oh, this feels dirty somehow like it yeah. was yeah. I, I was fine That's seeing the branding on the ball that came down with all the money in and like little nods to it but doing that almost like right now while they're doing this we're going to talk about this game and it, it went on for too long so it, it, mr beast can is doing it i don't see why anyone would get arsy with i, I think people it, on your level doing it or it's even our level. evil isn't it like it's got to be done yeah it's, if we've watched television, right, it's going to have a commercial break. In America, it's yeah, going to have more commercial yeah, breaks than it is television. Yeah, but you need, I think the, the mediums are different, aren't they? Especially in a, a generation whereby TikTok is the thing now. People don't have an attention span. You're going to lose people if you, like, if you're, it's in the middle of a video. People, I don't even have actual embedded YouTube ads. I, I don't have mid-rolls unless it's a really long video. Yeah. Because people, that loses people, they're like, right, but okay, is that, is that a decision since you got to like 500,000 followers or uh, subscribers or a million subscribers? Like, did, would you have had mid rolls if you only had, say, eight, nine, 10,000 subscribers? I think, yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm, I'm not criticizing people for having them because they're depending on how much you're earning your own personal life, how much you get need YouTube or, you know, your revenue from YouTube, you might need mid rolls in there. Mm -hmm. And they're not inherently a bad thing, but. There's, there's, as with everything, there's balance, right? And I don't have them in there because I think it disrupts the viewing experience and I don't need them in there. Some people might. But um, I, if it's something like that, where it's a two minute long, at least a, a mid roll that's on YouTube, is click, you can skip it after 10 seconds. Yeah. All right, you'll accept that. But that's the, that's the spectrum, right? If you're yeah. going to talk for two minutes, and that's so many brand deals now that I'm offered and just don't reply to, are, you know, people say, listen, can you talk for two minutes? Not at the beginning. Some people skip it. Talk in the middle of two minutes about this app or this service or this product. Yeah. Not a chance because who, who wants to listen to a two-minute ad? But, but isn't it mad, though, that someone in their business probably, well, they might not even have a marketing person, but somebody in their business that does marketing has gone, we're going to get this person to talk about our product for two minutes and think that's a good idea rather than going, this is what we want to pay you. You just get this in your video, make it seamless, make it attractive, make us... And, you would probably get a better return on that I, investment. I think I it's like the story of Icarus. I think we're too close to the sun. I don't think your average consumer will be thinking that much in detail. They'll just think this is part of the gig. You know, like you... you what, like, if you just let's slipped say like, it in? Like a, yeah, like a 14-year-old lad and he's, he's watching Mr. Beast's video. That He'll be so used to watching that that he might, he might be receptive to it. Ah, so we're looking so at like it. So like we're marketeers like a... and, you, and creators, yeah. we're going like we can, we can see what's going on. A bit like what I said about my missus. You know, the jumper pops up on her Facebook or Instagram feed 14 times as she, she buys it. It's like, all right, it's worked. Yeah. You know, they've got that clip. Maybe you're right. I can't believe you've come on here and actually have started to think of things from other people's perspectives, John. Really <laughs> I'm more surprised today. by the classical, like, antiquity reference. You said Icarus. Yeah. I'm, I'm really impressed by you. Well, <laughs> I thought that was one of your Brazilian jiu-jitsu moves. <laughs> oh, that's he's got him in an Icarus. That sounds that's like a good move. I wonder if it is one. Yeah. Ring down it. It'll be higher than Blue Belt, though. The, uh, yeah, well, higher than that. <laughs> So blue belt is the one under black though. That's what you told me, yeah. Yeah, brown. absolutely. Yeah, is it blue than brown. <laughs> no, it's like the first one. After, we've been through this, but the all first right. one up. It's it's as, if it, up as, as if he brings it up all the time to try and take the piss at you. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> but do not attack him in your dressing gown because he will definitely kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Right, so let's have a guess then now. So what I've, I've pulled I've only up. brought that up because I'm pissed off you're going to put that bit in with me in a vest <laughs> in 2006. <laughs> in. <laughs> Fuck you. Mate, you look well. You have a nice uh, time. I thought you carried off the vest in that picture quite well. It's the highlights, Very few. It's the highlights for me in the, the uh, cubic zirconia. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but everyone did They're back not then. diamonds. I thought nah. they were diamonds. Everyone did back then. So I've, I've, um, I've looked online for like the top earning Instagram influencers of, of 2022. 21? 21, 21, sorry. <laughs> Um, so the the list goes: Cristiano Ronaldo, Dwayne Johnson, Ariana Grande, Kylie Jenner. Come on, man! You're supposed to give those up. no suspense. I no, sorry. Like, Ooh, who's number one? Can you put oh. some some like suspense yeah. music before that? Should we guess who we think they are? <laughs> I'm surprised Ronaldo's number one actually. So, but I want why? you to try and guess. At, at yeah, what? I, I don't know why I'm surprised, but I think maybe that I, I, I suppose he's got worldwide appeal, hasn't he? I'm thinking like North America's a big market. And he's you want not gonna you be... want a better into this section, don't you? Because this is going to be a clip. So do you want to start this section again? No, no, I think I think it's fine. So, oh, yeah, on, it's fine who they are. It's how, what I want to see is like if you can guess how much a post costs, just one individual post by these in, oh, wow. by, by these people, yeah, and that's the reason I've, I've said it's Cristiano Ronaldo. So like, do do the list again then. Top, top ten, right? So you want me to tell you the top ten? Yeah, yeah, go on. All right. So in tenth place, it's uh, Kendall Jenner. Do oh, know, yeah. Do you know what that is? Yeah. I've heard the name. I don't actually know. Yeah, what. The lesser known of the Jenner daughters. Skip. I don't know, really. Justin Bieber is in ninth place. Mm -hmm. Then you've got uh, Beyonce. Okay. Do you know that? Uh, yeah, not Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventh place, you've got Messi. Interesting. Because oh, yeah. he's not the most. Uh, um, I wouldn't absolute. have even thought he'd been in that list somehow. Yeah. 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 Uh, sixth place, you've got Kim Kardashian. Do you know mm. that is? I know it is. I don't know why anyone would follow that. Well, well, uh, anyway. Fifth place, Selena Gomez, which I think is a bit of a curveball. She's a singer, right? Like, nowadays, yeah. do you yeah. know what I mean? Maybe, she's she, a, she's maybe she was just like a, a, the perfect age for when Instagram first like popped. Do you know what I mean? What, so, so she's got the followers now, like yeah, like she's like been there from day dot. Yeah, yeah. Remember Ashton Kutcher used to just be like the most followed person on Twitter because he was on it so early. He was like the first person yeah, to yeah. a million followers. He's like a mad entrepreneur as well now, isn't he? I, don't know. I, don't I think know. he is. Yeah, he's still like, married to Demi Moore. Was no, that him? He, yeah, he's with um, G.I. Jane. You can't joke about that now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> get slapped. Uh, no, he's, Ashton Kutcher is married to the the girl that he were in that 70s show with. What's she called? Mila Kunis. Oh, nice. Oh, all right. He uh, was married to Demi Moore, wasn't he? Or it was. Oh, I thought it just slipped into an alternate reality. All right, fourth place, Kylie Jenner. Yeah, I thought she would actually be higher. To be honest, I'm surprised she's not number one. Uh, third place, Ariana Grande. Second place, The Rock. And then first place, Cristiano Ronaldo. Wow. So I've got a, a question. Would it be the closer you are to the top, the more you would charge? Because I would think there's some people lower down that list that would charge more money than people at the top of that list, in my opinion. Yeah. I would say Kim Kardashian probably charges more for a post than, say, Cristiano Ronaldo would. That would be my guess. I don't know. Do we have figures on that? We do have figures. So it's, I've this got is, this no is idea. A, so this is a, for, to do a single post on their grid. Yeah, yeah. So it's not story. So Kim Kardashian, and this is reported in the influencer market. Should we now. guess? I'm going to go two million dollars would be her. I, I couldn't even guess. I'm I'll, just because I know Mike knows business. I'm going to oh, say about I, I might one point five million. I reckon it's in fact it's, go on. Let's go on. You both went a bit too high. All right, oh. so 20, for one post, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The, the, the reckon it's between four hundred and seventy and seven hundred thousand dollars. Mad that that's is. absolutely for one, obscene for one, for one single post. Instagram post. Yeah. How like how many followers does the top person on the list actually have? Uh, four hundred. Love to see her try and put a sock over her cock. <laughs> 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 but this goes back to what when you talk about regulation and things like that. So for this one post that they're actually talking about in this article, um, she's doing it for it looks like a, a, a multivitamin, um, like a vegans women vegan women's multivitamin gummies. <laughs> And um, she's just put hashtag ad, which is... That's the problem. Yeah, that's it. what they have to do now, don't they? Yeah, but you actually before, have to do more than that. I told you about this before. You have to declare it in the, in the, in, in the Instagram. Does it say at the top of the post, sponsored by? No. Nope. It doesn't say in so partnership. She's breaking a law then. It doesn't say in she's breaking partnership law. with... And they don't, there's no ramifications. It's the same no one on likes the grass. Come on, babe. No, I'm, just, I'm not having it, man. You yeah. abide by the law. <laughs> it's better than Selena Gomez. She didn't even put that in. She just, she just posted it. But it makes you wonder sometimes, like... If they're wearing the clothes of a brand, but it's not sponsored, then people might think, oh, is this sponsored as well? Like, do you know what I mean? When you're saying she's breaking yeah. up by not putting that thing. How do we know that Selena Gomez post where she's holding that handbag like that isn't just her holding that handbag like that that she's actually bought? Do you know what I mean? 
don't believe everything you see on the internet. That's the problem. Isn't I it? think you would like to believe that people are wise enough to think, well, if somebody's just posing with a handbag or some brand of clothing, they're probably being paid for it. Yeah, but equally, you would think, like, right? But I don't you know. think people are that have that common sense. So, I mean, forget Cristiano Ronaldo because, like, he's at the top. What, what does he charge? I'd just like to know that. So by the way, they're yeah. they're saying that he charges between seven hundred thousand and a million for one Instagram post and on the Ronaldo thing, right? This is I, I love. I think he's the. I, I'm the not to get into a deep dive football conversation, but I think he's the best player in the world, right? Well, I, I was at the whole kind of Messi Ronaldo peak thing. And I looked like the whole like, work ethic thing, first in training and all that stuff. And the, the one time I lost a little bit of respect for him, quite a lot actually, was Please when- Please don't say what I think you're gonna say. When he was accused of the, no, 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 the no. rape thing. Oh, so no, it wasn't was that, it, was something he, else. I don't even know that happened. So not, maybe the two times, we'll say <laughs> two times. <laughs> there were two times. No, when he's worse, I think, even, no, I can't say worse than that, but he started selling, have you see, ever seen those, um, been around years, those kind of belts you wear around your abs and you turn them on, they give you like oh, a electric like, oh, shock. Yeah. It's yeah. possibly a six pack, I thought. Yeah. Come off it, mate. Like how much money you won in a week? Don't, I, and that's when I lose, when I, I know he, he knows enough about human body. And you definitely he, don't use that belt. You definitely <laughs> don't use it. You know it doesn't work and yet people are going to pay for it because they like you. And that's what I hate about it. Uh, Suzuki, uh, is it Suzuki Swift? He's, spot, he's, he's done stuff <laughs> for them. That car, when he's yeah. driving around in his fucking like Maserati you, or whatever you it is. You don't drive that car. Well, this is a funny one because the one yeah. that they're actually giving an example of here, so he's 420 million followers, is, is sponsored by uh, a shampoo, shampoo by Clear. And in the caption, um, it helps him keep a clear head, which helps him stay on top of his game. Yeah. Shampoo, does it? Shampoo, yeah. So he's the best player in the world because he's got a good shampoo. I was just thinking about switching my shampoo, actually. So coming shampoo back, back maybe, Coming out of retirement. Yeah. 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 Any sides out there looking for a Just player. in time for the World Cup. I like, yeah. this, I like this one, though. The second uh, the second most expensive one is The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. So he charges uh, between a half a million and 850,000. And he's peddling water, Voss water. That's mad, that, isn't it? It's like Peckham Springs. Have you seen that? On <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go, but it's what? green. What's, go- sick. What's going on? I don't know, but like if he uses it and he's not making false cl- statements in there, I, I'm, not that, I'm not that bothered about that. I mean, I'm just blown away by the how obscene the, the, the money is there. What, 800 grand? Yeah. 800. To put a post on Instagram. So you're not even doing any work there, really, are you? Not like you're making so here's, here's a question. Would you have done that zombie game ad for 800 grand? 800 grand? Yeah. Fucking right, I would have done. I'd have flown home and done that. Yeah, for 800,000. So then that, that makes me think like, so everyone can be bought, But that, the reason I did, didn't do the zombie one wasn't because I had like any kind of reservations about it being um, misleading. I knew that I could, the spec they gave me, I could have made that organic. Still made it very clear it was an ad. Yeah. Um, but it wouldn't have been a kind of mis-selling or anything like that. The reason I didn't do it is purely because I thought, well, I don't really have time. What I'm doing right now is more important. Yeah. But yeah, 800,000 quid. That's a lot of money. Think how many cameras I could buy with that. There's a a bunch of new gear I want. Think how many trips I could then go on. And if you could do it without selling out your principles, I'm not against that. But if you if you're lying about stuff, this is the greatest game ever. No, it's probably not. The greatest game ever is like Street Fighter to me. (laughs) So like you know, Street Fighter Two Turbo on SNES. That one. Oh, I don't know. Final Fantasy Seven. What's What's your limit? So have you ever done paid stuff? Yeah. 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 What? How much did you charge or get paid? I can't remember the last one. There were a you couple can of thousand. <laughs> on my channel. <laughs> you can remember. No, but I'm thinking of like, so Ben's channel, so we manage Ben's channel, the yeah, police yeah. interceptor guy. And um, I think we're charging between sort of 1,500 and 2,000 for a 60 second ad. 60. 60 second, second ad, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was mind blowing to me though, because like I would, w- with respect to Ben, that, that channel compared in, in view count, for example, to mine, yeah. is no, it's what, it's a percent, 10%, not even 10%, right? Oh, so you thought the numbers so would be I, a lot lower? I, yeah, so if somebody asked me, you know, if I was willing to do an, an advertisement for somebody, for example, yeah. perfectly, I could c- keep my integrity intact and do it. I wouldn't, I'd be probably thinking, well, I'll charge about two grand maybe. Yeah. But by that logic, I should be charging 20 grand. Oh, 30 yeah, grand is yeah, more yeah. kind but of weirdly now, I would say I'd be closer to that figure than I would be putting socks over my cock for 600 quid now. You'd want to be close to 20 grand? Not 20 grand. I'd say like what you were saying, like 1,500, two yeah. grand. That would be the sort oh, of yeah, ballpark. Yeah. So if someone came to me now and said, I, I would want you to do a, an ad mid-roll in your video of, yeah. that's kind of what I'd be looking at. Yeah, I mean, like, so that's probably most with like that I've But tried. I don't know why that figure, I've, that's almost like, same that head. feels about yeah, right. I, I, yeah. I got do you know what I mean? It's, there's no like- Feels like you're not ripping someone off at the same time as 
you've been paid the, yeah. yeah i got the, paid i think my first i got my first brand deal before i had a thousand subscribers yeah. by licked which is like a commercial music oh i thought you were gonna say that's how you got the brand deal oh no i wonder where <laughs> you're gonna miss licked. licked what no no, no down the rabbit hole but i got i think i got paid a thousand quid for that yeah which were before you had a thousand subs before i had a thousand subs and it were Holy amazing man. like because they've gone bust since yeah they're, I think that's <laughs> right, they? no, they I'm still, they're still going now they're still going uh, sure, yeah. I've, i was looking for them the other no, day. they've just had another round of investment but because yeah. i mean that company that company they wasted cool. all the money on you yeah they definitely wasted the <laughs> money on me rounds. yeah they did invest yeah. they, again like, what a massive audience honestly all seven of the viewers have gone and signed up to this <laughs> you know what funny thing is actually about that <laughs> for every sign up that i got i got 45 dollars Oh, so it? I got a thousand pound and then forty five dollars. So I bet I got paid three or four grand. Strong deal. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And I had the links. So I could send it to anybody. Like send it to you guys, even though you're never going to use it. Yeah. Just just needed a sign up, um, which is. But the actual. I remember when he sends it, we said that fucking Josh has sold out already. <laughs> <laughs> Do you only want six hundred subs? But that, <laughs> that platform itself was completely different. Like you could use actual yeah. tracks that you already It was actually radio. quite good, wasn't it? Yeah, really good. Now we're like, that's actually useful, you know, so we'll, we'll do that. But then back to Ben's channel, Ben's channel costs a fortune to make. Like it's not made a penny in, in the year that we've been doing it. Yeah. So that it got to it got to a point where we're like, we need to get some money back. So we got reached out to buy a bunch of sponsors and I were like, random shit. And then it were a VPN company, a Surfshack VPN reached out. They seem to do loads, so don't we? Fucking like, everywhere, those guys. They've got a big budget, but they give you full creative freedom. Yeah. So they're like, we'll pay you like whatever it was, 1,500, two grand per video. Like, do you want to do it? And I thought, yeah, like you can fit that in. You know, it's a it's an app that anyone anybody can use really. A bit of online security. Do you know one creator that I, that started doing ads and it felt a bit dirty and it was a uh, True Geordie. That oh, was yeah. the one where, because I'd seen his, his come up really before he became like, the, the podcaster that he is now in the early days it was just literally like this you know it was yeah. just like mates chatting that was the kind of vibe but then he started to he moved to london and then it was like he was promoting it might have been ladbrooks at the time but then he got yeah. onto a vape right there was a vape company that paid him and he started to when they were talking they'd like vape and it was like they'd, as if they put like a cloudy sort of like filter over the top of the videos to make it look all smoky and, stuff. and it just promised but it yeah. kind of, but it felt like this feels forced and yeah. false. Or like when he got like a clothing deal, it was like everybody was wearing those clothes in the videos and stuff. And it felt like too much. It was like, it didn't sit right with me. But, but equally, who am I to say what another man can and can't earn? Like, you know what I mean? That's the thing that keeps him going. That's the, it's his job. That's it's the wildest job, thing about, about you as a creator compared to anybody else. The fact that you don't do paid gigs, you don't do sponsorships, you, 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 you don't do any of that. You just make your videos every week. You you accept what you get from Google AdSense or whatever. But you do, you, you, you do good though on Google. Though, yeah, I have AdSense. the luxury of... of um, that's what I mean. I think a lot yeah, more yeah. people would be like that given the choice. So did you not do any ads to that point? No, I, I, I had done, and I always say this, I, I had done a few, like a handful. You yeah. count them on maybe one hand. And it was I, I never did, did things that I, to me felt like I was compromising some honesty or whatever. Yeah. I remember uh, you used to always get beard, you know, beard brands, obviously. Mm -hmm. That would probably say, "Oh yeah, we want you to do this," but you know, say it's the best beard oil ever. Say, "No, lad, it's not. It's not the best beard oil ever." You know, a beard oil is a beard oil. If you're paying for a, a decent one, tw twelve quid maybe for a bottle. If you're paying more than that, you're paying too much. If you're paying less than that's probably a shit oil. But yeah. I'm not going to say your brand's the best it, unless I believe it is. And I probably, I, you know, I, I, I probably I'll get sent them all the time. I must have about fifty different beard oils at home. Yeah. So for me, it was always like, I'll do it because I needed to do it, I wanted better gear, you know, like yeah. all my camera equipment. I mean, even from a channel like mine, forget really well-produced ones like Josh and yours, it, it cost 30 grand for that for that kit, you know? And that's what I always wanted to make the videos better. So you got to bear in mind, if you're watching your favorite creator, they might need to do that for the sake of producing content. But for me, the problem is selling out your integrity and saying saying things off you know to be false in exchange for an amount of cash. And I don't think, I, I wouldn't do that for any money. I don't need the money yeah. that bad, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean. There are things that are more important, I think, than money. Crypto mining then, or crypto in general. I want to talk about crypto influencers, but you, again, you're a bit of an OG in that space. Do you know what crypto mining is? I, I, no. Oh, well, I, I kind of got, have, a, have a vague idea, but this is where I'm going to kind of glaze over and let you uh, let you guys well, can, do Can talking. you explain your crypto mining experience? Well, I've got two videos, Crypto for Dummies, that you should watch. That's our most viewed uh, video <laughs> of all time. Probably will watch that. <laughs> Uh, and then the other one was on crypto mining rigs. So when we sold the business, we obviously had a lump sum of money and we went to do random shit. So one of the things that we were introduced to was crypto. And we did buying crypto 
Uh, but back in them days, there weren't as many options and coins to choose from. And this was before celebrities were pumping and shilling coins. So it was almost like your choice was pretty much Bitcoin, uh, Ether, and then there's a few different other ones. So we bought that type of stuff. And then crypto mining was an option that was available. So we met this bloke <laughs> that, that said to us, why gamble and just buy a coin? What you want to do? And he called it uh, uh, like a horse and a race course. He goes, why gamble on one horse winning the race when you could buy a crypto mining rig and own the racetrack? So you always win. Did he look at you like that as well? Like he's yes. going to kill you as well? Yeah. What a salesman, right. man. Yeah, and we actually genuinely considered buying 10 or 15 of these rigs to mine for coins. Fuck knows how it works. It's long, complex maths algorithm. It solves these equations and you get a bit of coins. Some coins are easier to mine than others, right? Fuck knows. I just did what he told me to do, right? <laughs> so we did that. He made claims that one of these machine would, machines would churn out maybe 900 quids worth of crypto per month. So it seemed like a no-brainer. 10 grand to buy the machine will be making profit year two, right? That's what we were thinking. Two years into this thing, it had cost us more in electricity to run these fuckers than we'd actually made in crypto. <laughs> they, it, we worked it out that based on what the coins were worth at that moment in time, they had made 21 pounds per month per machine. So we got royally fucked over, really. So that was my experience of crypto mining. Yeah. Don't do it. My actual experience of buying crypto and selling crypto, I'm really boring with investing. So I just set myself a little realistic target. I'm not looking to 10x or 100x like a 10 pound investment. I put 35 grand into Ether and said, once this hits 50,000 pound in value, I'm just going to withdraw my funds. And that's what I did. So in nine weeks, I made 15 grand in crypto. Strong. That's very sensible. Which, is, which was good for like a... I didn't know what I was yeah. doing type thing. But what I wasn't doing is trying to guess and go, well, I'm going to buy at this price yeah, and like sell at this price. I literally that. went, I'm going to put £35,000 in. As soon as it's worth £50,000, I'm going to withdraw my money. Is that thirty five grand you could have, you, in your mind, you could afford to lose? Though? Yes. So yeah. that's one caveat is, <laughs> think of it as like you could potentially lose this money. I only did that because I just sold my business and I had a couple of millions at my bank. Yeah. I wouldn't have felt confident to have, I didn't believe in it enough to put a hundred grand in. I didn't yeah. believe in it enough to put a million pounds in. Now, Ian sent me something quite disgusting the other week, which was if we'd invested, uh, it wasn't that, uh, <laughs> if we had invested the money that we'd got each from the sale uh, of the business and put it into Bitcoin on that day and then sold it on the day that he sent me the thing, we'd have had 26 million pounds sat in our bank that day. Oh. Can't think about it like that though, man, because there's, yeah. there's no underlying thing to lose, was it? Yeah, yeah. You, can't, you, you could always lose but all that, right? I tell you what, if you talk about getting shit off people on your YouTube videos um, for just talking about food or just talking about whatever it might be, Gary V, <laughs> the number of absolute expert crypto traders that can predict what happens to crypto four years after you made a video it is YouTube. It's like, of course, mate, if we'd held it for another three years, we could have sold it for that. But we didn't fucking know that in 2016 or 2017 yeah, or 2019. Yeah. There are so many hindsight investors on YouTube. It's unbelievable. So yeah, but if we'd done that with Bitcoin, we wouldn't have set up another business. We wouldn't have set up a YouTube channel. If we'd just gone, oh, this Bitcoin seems to be kicking off. We'll put the money into that kept it for that amount of time and then sold it, we'd have been sat on 26 million pounds each. Uh, Hard lines. Yeah. And who in the right mind would have done that? Rather, I'm going to take all this money that I've just made. I worked my bollocks off for three years to sell yeah, the business. Yeah, so this is what, but what a lot of people do, and I get asked about crypto quite a lot, especially on Facebook. I get, I'll get a DM saying like, what coin shall I invest in or whatever? It's like, I've only got 2,000 pounds. What coin shall I put it in? And I'm going to, and they, they're trying to make 200 grand from two grand but it's their only two grand or it's their last yeah. two grand. That's a dangerous position. But if I said to them, just put 20 pound in that coin and say, so well, I'm only going to get 68 quid back, but you've tripled your money, yeah. nearly yeah. quadrupled your money, but that's not enough. So it's almost like to play like that, you're either gambling on an absolute unicorn with your life savings, which seems to be the majority of people fall in that group, or it's absolute wealthy people that can go, I'm going to put 5 million into this. The price is going to go up. So it, it, it's now worth 6 million, 7 million. 
they pull their money out and everybody else that jumped in and it gets fucked over, potentially. It's gambling. It's proper terrifying. It's basically gambling. Yeah. And that, That's all it is, to me. Yeah, so talking about influencer, crypto influencers. So you've got... Um, well, they're the worst for that, by the way. Pumping and dumping. Yeah. I, I was looking online and... Um, <laughs> so it's thought like, that's a good... I want to get it on a t-shirt, but not about crypto. Pump and dump. Pump, pump and, and dump, iron, that's what they call The rest. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. Pump and dump is what they call... Like, one night stands in Scotland, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, pump and dump. I like that. Do the accent. You do a really good Scottish one. Don't I you? cannot do a Scottish accent. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you can do. You might be able to do. It. You're pretty I don't good. Know. You, did, you, you got Conor McGregor was good, by the way. Yeah, that was, it wasn't bad. That was it. I've been yeah. cultivating that though for Which a while before. Yeah. Conor McGregor. When the I red said panties. Oh, yeah. You're always. Sim- you, wait, let's see if I can do it again. What did I say? Red panty night. Yeah. Yeah. Red panty night. Your wife is in me DMs. Yeah, that's quite good. That's you don't think. Smart, you can do South African like. Like that. No, I can't. You can hold conversations. That. Yeah, you can. The vi- video actually going up on Sunday is what the uh, waitress I'm speaking to is South African. I thought oh, this would be a good bit of banter just to take the piss a little bit. She, I don't think she enjoyed it. No. But she gave me a six out of Weird ten. That, isn't it? I wanted a ten out of ten for the, get, for the accent. Not for getting the piss taken out of you at work and she didn't like it. I was doing it quite lightheartedly, I thought. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, t- so we've got two influencers, two equally impressive boxers. You've got Tyson Fury and Jake Paul. Yeah. They're oh, they're recent, definitely on the same level, yeah. Same level. Recently been pumping... Uh, oh, credit, cr- I'll just say one thing on uh, Jake Paul. Uh, he's lived the life as a boxer for two, three years, so I reckon he would actually do all right against some low-level journeyman boxers, like proper boxers. It's just a shame he doesn't actually fight them people. Yeah. You can't knock him. Obviously, he fights people that aren't boxers, but he's lived in the gym for two, three years now. Yeah, they've both put, put a shift in. And supplemented. In a certain way, don't get me started on juice, but his, his body <laughs> composition has changed a lot in that time. And his brothers, uh, he recently spoke to Dana White, uh, Jake Paul, so Logan Paul, yeah. um, about doing MMA. Yeah. So that might be something you see one day, which I don't know if you want to see it or not, but not really. spoke yeah. about with Danny, like Danny on it, uh, about if you've got the influence, you can get the, the paydays in, oh, in, in but, the sport. But anything's like that now. That's why being known, having an audience, an engaged audience, whatever it be, a YouTube channel, social media accounts with lots of followers that opens up so many doors for people if even say if it's in football now if you've got two 18 year olds that are at similar standards and you're sort of like a semi-pro club or a bottom of the, like low level club are you going to take the 18 year old that nobody knows you can take the 18 year old that might have a hundred thousand followers on instagram yeah. you're probably going to take him because commercially it makes more sense absolutely so i get it it's, it's a shit world we live in that that's actually taken into account but you can't whinge about the game well, speaking of shit houses, Jake Paul as <laughs> uh, mate, you've got a blue belt. He could definitely take you hundred percent. Jake nah. Paul, do you reckon he nah. could box? Jake Paul, get the fuck I would, out. I would Not never boxing. I think that Josh should tie him up. I wouldn't just stri- to get I him on the ground. Him. I wouldn't want to strike. You reckon him. he could have Jake Paul legit? And I hope this goes out. And I hope this is a real. And all Jake Paul fans see this. I don't know. I mean, like, if, if he came out, like, I think if I could, if I could dodge a punch and grab hold of him, I think it's fair game. I reckon. Dodge a punch. He's not fucking Mike Tyson. For God's sake, just no, get the fuck out of the way. And get on, on the ground. Right, let me just get this right. So he knocked out Tyron Woodley, right? Yeah. And I would say Tyron Woodley's probably better at grappling and MMA. Oh yeah, he's, he's a black belt. He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, Yeah. So, so all right then, do you think you could beat Tyron Woodley? No, but that's what that was a boxing match. It was literally a stand. If if right, if, right, Ty- right. if Jake Paul had gone into the ring with Tyron Woodley, so you reckon in. An MMA fight, you could beat Jake Paul, hundred percent. Has Jake Paul been yeah. paying you for like? Is this like an influence? No, no, I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just paying yeah, you yeah. to say that. You, I, I yeah. think that if Jake Paul stepped in with even some of the featherweights, he'd get his ass under to him. Uh, MMA, MMA, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why it's not. Do you reckon there's anyone in MMA that could beat him at boxing? Yes, different weight class, but like Tom Aspinall, who's like the yeah, current yeah. heavyweight fighter. Yeah, yeah. He used to. He did boxing with Tyson Fury. He was one of his training partners. Oh, there's it? some mint boxers in MMA. Yeah. Um, that's why Danny Mitchell said the other week it's, it's the hardest sport to master is MMA because you're doing all of the martial arts. It's mad doing... that they do it though and they get paid like a fraction of what the MMA fight, uh, what the boxers get. That's what that's we had that discussion last time. We was it mad. Paddy the Baddy was on twelve twelve thousand quid. Yeah, and then he says he's going to open a food bank and you know and all that stuff. It's like it's mad, isn't it? It's like you know, if you box, you probably would earn a hundred yeah. times that amount of money. Anyway, crazy. So, Look, but wait, yeah, wait, go wait, on. Oh, oh yeah, so ta- yeah, Jake Paul um, has reportedly, so uh, we'll say alleged uh, so far, he has pumped some coins, but across five coins, he's made two point two million dollars, and he made one point five million dollars in particular off a coin called Stick Dicks, <laughs> which I think is like mental. 
Anybody, stick anybody, dicks. anybody in the room buy any stick dicks? But this is the thing, isn't it? <laughs> if you nope. are investing in something called stick dick because Logan Paul <laughs> has told you to, uh, sorry, Jake Paul has told you to, you deserve everything you get. <laughs> you, yeah, you have You've limited, limited sympathy for people like that. But the, the, at the same time, it's it's incumbent upon somebody in a... In a, in a I don't care who you are, but you, you, why would you want to mislead people for, the, for your own gain? Come on now, you know what I mean? Let's Come on now. <laughs> Fucking, don't get me started, man. <laughs> well, I'll be yeah, able to get angry. So well, it was yummy that I know he's, but he's in a lot of trouble at the moment, isn't he? Because they're actually saying that it's been pumping and dumping. Uh, yeah, with the Federal Trade Commission. This yeah. is all alleged, by the way, in case everyone gets their panties in a twist. But uh, yeah, it, it goes, well, yeah. the sort of story goes that he, he'd get given, so stick dicks, whoever invented stick dicks, stick dicks DM him. And here's like, a million dicks. Here's a million dicks. They were 20 cents. You yeah. do a tweet about it and then sell it when it gets to $2. Yeah. And that's what he was doing. And they sell it. it and then everyone buys it. That's the it problem with crypto. Though, is it? it's, not, it's not regulated, is it? If you if you do that in, in the tr st the stock market, the, the trading but, world... But you know they do do that in yeah, the, of course in the do, stock yeah. market. Yeah. Like. But what I'm saying is it's more... I think it's more... Um, people know that, don't they? People that know how to trade and they know about trading will, will be aware of that and that, that's a possibility, et cetera, et cetera. In crypto, because so many people that don't even... There are people that trade crypto and buy crypto, whatever, that wouldn't even... Trade a stock, which is far less risky. That's the whole yeah. thing about crypto. Is like it's appealing to people that are using the last two grand to try and be a Super become a millionaire. Yeah. When and and I don't know, man. You're gonna that, get me mad if we keep going on about it. That's the <laughs> wildest thing, though, isn't it? Because it's so like it's hot. It's a hot topic now. Yeah. I mean, it probably wasn't as hot when you were releasing those videos. No, there, were, there weren't as many what are called shit coins or alt yeah. coins, is what people call them. There weren't as many of those things about. Like even Ether was like. I was sort of questioning, like, oh, it's it's, it's kind of going to be like what Bitcoin is that Ethereum? Yeah, 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 right, okay, uh, yeah, Ethereum. So at the time, I remember talking to someone saying, like, well, everyone's buying Bitcoin, and he was telling me, oh no, Ethereum's the thing because that's got an actual use, and there's people building stuff on blockchain using yeah. that technology, blah 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 blah. So he told me a, a pretty compelling argument to get involved in Ether, and he wasn't selling it to me. He was just a bloke that knew a lot more about it than me that I spoke to. And I said, like, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? And he told me out of the two, uh, Ether was the one to do. So, and that's why I did Ether. And that's where I made my money. I didn't even bother with Bitcoin at that point. Is Dogecoin, 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 is that still around? Dogecoin, yeah, but they're all around, aren't they? But they're just, whether they're worth that's anything or not. That's that's pumped, that's 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 but here's a perfect example of how that, got pumped and dumped. So everyone was talking about how one tweet from Elon Musk and it goes through the roof. Yeah. And he was meant to be, well, it, I said meant to be, he actually did host Saturday Night Live, didn't he? And everybody thought the price was going to bump up after that um, episode. But everybody that bought it, they're called whales, aren't they, when they bought like the majority of the coin, flogged it to all those idiots that were chatting on their little um, Telegram or Discord yeah. or whatever they call it, Reddit groups. They get fucked. They always get fucked left holding the bag, which ironically, they think they're the most knowledgeable and know the most about these coins. They're the ones that actually get fucked the most because <laughs> they're being fed bullshit. Yeah. So, so Liam, who worked, worked with us at the time, I remember when this happening, he was like, he, he bought Do Do Dogecoin. It's Doge, isn't it? Yeah. He'd bought it Why is back. it Doge if the logo is a dog? I don't know. Is it just taking it? But let's probably, be honest, they're all morons, aren't they? He, he, yeah. He'd bought it way back yeah. when. So like, I think he put, let's say, 40 quid in and he had... 400 coins and as, as it were creeping up to like Elon Musk like it all started like chattering yeah. and I think he bought it at the time let's say it was like 40 pence a coin he told me about it and it's like Elon Musk going to be on Saturday Night Live in like a fortnight and it's going to go to the moon that was like that was the thing was that was that was the so the moon. his 40 quid at the time then was worth I think it probably worth about 200 quid. So I'm like, fuck me, you, you've already like tripled that money. Take your money out, mate. Yeah, I'm like, pull your money. Or take all of it out and leave 40 quid still left in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he told me about it and I thought, all right, what have you got to lose? Like I put 300 quid in that day and it went from, let's say 40p to 80p. So uh, during that week, you can see it creeping up. So my my 400 quid, we're up at like 800 quid at this point. I thought, fucking hell. So this is this Thursday. The Friday comes round, it's a thousand quid. So his 40 quid's now worth a thousand quid. And I'm like, mate, like pull it out. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, we're just going to keep it in. We're going to ride it like it's, it's going to the moon. So I'm, I'm <laughs> going, mate, you're 40 quid to like a thousand quid. Like you don't earn a massive wage. You haven't got savings. You live in a flat in Leeds with your pal. Like just pull it out, like pull it out. And if, you know, you could put it in something else, just take the money, like take it and run. He's like, no, no, no. I said, all right. So Friday night, Saturday morning, and my four, 400 quid had gone to like 1500 quid. 
and I pulled it out. I was like, that's plenty for me. I was like, I, I'd have lost the 400 quid, but I'd made over a thousand pound on top of what I, I'd got. So I just pulled it all out. Sure as shit, it didn't even get to Elon Musk stepping on to Saturday Night Live. <laughs> it had gone. Like it had dropped to, for, to nothing. Maybe so. you were the reason. When you pulled your fish so like out of the whales. Collapsed, you're the guy. I'm one of the whales. Yeah. But I was buzzing. I'm like, oh, I've made a thousand quid, but I didn't need the thousand quid. I didn't need, yeah. like, it didn't matter if I need, if I, you know, now it would be nice to have. But what, how this works then is so he's there and he's gone from 40 quid to 200 quid. Yeah. Then he's telling his mates, oh, you want to get in on this? So these people are then telling all their mates to get in on it. Yeah. And that's when the, when the whale fucking pulls the rug. It's all these people that haven't got a clue. And if someone in the pub is talking to you about a crypto to invest in and they don't know anything about investing or crypto, it's probably not a good idea is my sort of like advice. The moment, like I said, Colin or John is talking about it while he's eating his port scratchings, we've probably missed the boat for that thing. Or Absolutely. you're about to be the victim of whatever's going to happen next, essentially. It's very rare that you're going to get a unicorn at... 40 cents or whatever it might be and it go to a million like, oh yeah but that's what everyone seems to think the next coin they're investing is gonna is, is gonna happen it, it blows my mind it's mental isn't it it is yeah. terrifying but these celebrities are because it's unregulated they've managed to get away with it for so long so you've got jake paul on there telling his twenty thousand uh people that follow him for crypto advice retweet this, pump that shit, blah, blah, blah. So all their followers see it. So the value goes up because more people want to buy it. It's got a value attached to it. And then he just sells all this before it gets dumped, basically. It's just, it's, it is illegal, isn't it? It should be illegal. It should be illegal, but it seems to be just, it's still going rife now. You know, there was one on the UFC that it was called Marshall Rogan E New. Have you guys heard of that? And no. they named it after... Joe Rogan's dog. That was the name it. of a coin. Yeah, something roll off the tongue. Doesn't Come it? Rocket is one that. I, Come Rocket. I've heard of that one. Yeah. yeah. But that that one, the UFC fighters were peddling it. It had nothing to do with Joe Rogan. They just used his sort of clout and his dog's clout. I think I've got sixty four thousand Raven coin sat in a crypto wallet somewhere. Is it worth anything? That is it? No, about fuck knows. <laughs> a, a grand it might be worth a grand or something like that. But that's what I mined for two years. Oh right, okay. Yeah, so it cost me. Th- 30 grand in crypto mining rigs to earn a thousand pounds of electricity. Imagine what it'd be worth at a cost now. Martin Lewis would be his head for falling off. <laughs> yeah. It would, wouldn't it? The cost of it now. But yeah, so, and I'm I'm holding that bag, as they call it, hoping that at one day that Raven will get to one dollar and I can go, oh, there you go. How smart was I? I mined this shit coin for three years and it's, I kept holding it for 12 it years. It sounds cooler to have that than Cum Rocket, though. Yeah. I'd say I've got a little bit of Raven. Have you got a little bit of cum rocket? No. Thick dicks. Yeah. It's been a while since I had a cum rocket. That's why I think <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, also, they're, also, like, they're also taking the piss with the, the names. Intensity, my orgasms well. yeah. have reduced. So. That's what I'm saying. But, <laughs> you, but don't get me wrong, I believe in the blockchain and all that, and I think they can solve so many problems and stuff like that for big businesses. So that is here to stay. You know, that's like the internet. Yeah. You know, going back in them days, and be like, heard this. People have got a website. They don't just phone people up. Like, you know, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. like blockchain is here. Like that's never going to You should put us in the, the business category. That's where this podcast has shifted to. Yeah, sorry. Could we, could we, could we, no, could we go up higher in the in the chart there if we're in the business we're category? Actually, yeah, we might have a better chance. <laughs> Somehow we ended up in comedy. I don't, yeah, I don't know why. We don't know which one to pick. It's so bad. <laughs> that's probably why. I remember what our podcast was. We, we were like the 17th most listened to podcast in Sweden. That was our like the height of our podcasting fame. Nice. Like who the fuck listens to it in Sweden? It's That's impressive though. Six that. people. Yeah. So what? Any? What? You got any more thoughts on this? Uh, on these shit coins and because like Ty, like Tyson Fury, Floki, he knew. Well, he's got a drink out as well, Tyson Fury. He's just he's at the height of his fame and he's just monetizing it in any which way he can and he's taking brand deals with anybody that will come to him. He's not invented this this Bitcoin. Someone's uh, this crypto. Someone's gone to him. Do you want to be the face of this? And he's gone. How much are you going to pay me? Yes, I'll be the face of it. He knows fuck all about crypto. He doesn't know the team behind it. He doesn't know if it's got any apps. Uh, sorry, any um, ability to improve people's lives or if it's got any function outside of, it's going to be shit, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to be shit. And I bet his drink's also shit. That furious or ferocious drink that he's got as well. I haven't even seen that. Have you not seen that? It's an energy drink. Yeah, it's an energy I drink. I avoid those like the plague anyway, so you don't want to catch me. You just me. drink black coffee, don't you? Just black, yeah. That's, I suppose that is an energy drink, but um, mm. it's cheap and it tastes good. But yeah, so uh, it'll just be... He's coming to the end of his career now. He just wants to monetize as many things as possible. How much money do you need, though? That man must be making stacks of money. Yeah. Don't know. But it's like they say, the richer you get, the more money you want, right? That's what I'm sure somebody said that. Yeah, at some point. Of. Some in, in, in the room. room. Maybe in like a, a more con- concise way. Fair so enough. I mean, we, we have slightly turned into the, the back half of this podcast a little bit businessy. Mm. 
Um, in fact, following on from the last podcast, we got a lot of, um, I got a few uh, messages about the difference between like what we're talking about now, like influencer brand dealy stuff, and then actual YouTube audiences for business. And we did a, um, a, leaked, a LinkedIn Live about it. Because mm -hmm. like, I think people are struggling to distinguish between the difference. Because obviously like, you've got, where you're a straight entertainer, where you make your money online, yeah. and then you've got just using it to facilitate your business, and that seems to be a confusing one. I thought we'd explained it pretty well. But. So, so what they they don't know the difference between an influencer and not that they don't know the difference between, but that they can be both. Do you know, like you, so you are like you are kind of both. You, you can be an, an entertainer on YouTube and monetize it, but also be influential in the business space. To, to, to use it to drive business yeah. for your actual business. I mean, you'll just come across people in life that are just talented like that, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I think it was because I had, I built my actual real audience not on YouTube. So I was known in that world first. And that's probably where I would, I make the majority of my money. And that's where I get most of my views. And most of my audience still comes from those platforms. It was people knew me before the mic winner. So there's people that, see my stuff on youtube and like eh? yeah I, I, well, what's this yeah like that, that makes us a bit nervous because you do that stuff we're a proper business and you want to work on our content through our oh, productions yeah. but i've seen you doing that on youtube that makes me a bit nervous and then there's people on youtube that only know me as that i think mike winnett is my real surname <laughs> and think that i legitimately did think that yeah, well, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's lots of people right. like, you wouldn't tell me otherwise and that's where I we have a problem Mr. when we do do something that's like proper business so obviously i've got like views of my own Say if I wanted to put the views of my own content that I create for predominantly a business audience yeah. and LinkedIn, essentially. If I put that on my entrepreneur channel, the Mike Winnett channel on there, they'd be like, what? You're actually giving us real tips on how to market your business or how to scale your business or save your business. You're a entrepreneur because <laughs> it's not because they don't understand that it's not the same thing at all. I'm not promising you anything. I'm just saying, yeah. here's actual things that I've learned in business. I'm telling you about them. They couldn't make that distinction. Um, so it's an awkward kind of, it's almost like I am two people to two very different yeah. audiences and probably the closest it got to, um, blurring lines, blurring the lines was, uh, the entrepreneur bingo and the get rich or die trying series. It was like, it was almost like a humorous look at real business practices, real marketing practices, real sales practices. So that was the, the one that was sort of straddled both worlds. You enjoyed that one, didn't you? The entrepreneur bingo. Oh yeah, I loved I loved those videos. Well, some of some of them aren't uh, still aren't allowed back on YouTube because it just causes too much trouble. But that's mad, that it. The format, the form, I mean, it could have been anyone that you were talking about, but I think the form I've taken the piss out of somebody who was yeah. a pretty evil person, but doing it humorously with all the graphics in the background and whatnot. Yeah, and you're pretty good uh, camera facing too. It ends in a seven, you know that kind of thing, <laughs> and that, that motivated. But I'd yeah. be cracked up every time. What's <laughs> funny about that is um, I generally watch them in real time, so it wasn't like as in. I had already watched it and, it and gone, let's now make a video about this. It would be Dan, uh, you know, Dan. Yeah, yeah. So Dan would say to me, oh, Grant Cardone's doing a webinar. I've recorded it. And then he would show me that. And I would, gen so I genuinely didn't know on them bingos if it was going to be a bingo, a pass or a fail at the end of the episode. Which is mad, isn't it? Because normally really? you go I thought you'd have pre-produced it. Yeah, I thought no, you'd no. have like known that. No, so that's how come sometimes I thought this is 100% is nailed on going to be a entrepreneur. But because it didn't tick all the boxes on bingo, it'd have to be a fail. And sometimes it blew my mind like, what? And sometimes I was watching thinking, what the fuck have I watched? This doesn't even tick any of the boxes. The Dan Penner one, where's yeah. my fucking gun? And <laughs> you're all, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, I was watching it thinking, what the fuck is this? Like, why am I spending three hours watching this mad shit? Like, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. which is mad because most people think like, you've gone out your way to deliberately make this person look a dickhead. Yeah. No, yeah. no, I just, we randomly picked a webinar and he just looks like a dickhead. Yeah. So yeah, so some people that I think are entrepreneurs actually failed the entrepreneur bingo and some people that I didn't think necessarily are entrepreneurs passed it because they used all the tactics, which is think it's quite unusual for a YouTuber to make YouTube videos without knowing how the video is going to end. Absolutely. Just doing it live. Yeah. A bit like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, <laughs> we just sort of have a loose a loose agenda and we go for it. But yeah, so that was one thing about the videos. That's probably why I enjoyed making them the most because it wasn't like I've had to invest my own money into yeah. buying something, recording me doing it, and then reporting on the results. You know, making videos about does crypto mining rigs work where you've got to buy 30 grand's worth of rigs. Two years of... Mine for yeah. two years and then give your results back. 
is probably not a very wise strategy for either business or YouTube. Absolutely, that's terrible, isn't it? That'd be all right if you knew it was going to pay off at like 100 million viewers in two years' time, but... But some bloke told me it was going to make me 900 quid a month. Yeah, well, so I was thinking, great, I'm going to get paid for the content and the mining. Turns out, didn't get paid for the mining at all. <laughs> so how did it feel to get back on LinkedIn then? Brilliant. That's where my biggest audience is. The only thing that was different going back was I had 86,000 followers when I got banned and I was down at 76,000 followers. And I found out that what they'd done is they'd culled any like blag accounts, bot accounts, spam accounts. So I think a lot of creators had lost a big chunk of their audience, but it's just nice to have it back because obviously that's where my main audience is. That's where my biggest reach is. It's organic. It's good for the business stuff that I do as well. So good. I don't know if that was because of your podcast. Is that what you're <laughs> We'll claim saying? it, yeah, yeah. Happy ending because I know that was a, a bit of pill to swallow being you know, banned from LinkedIn. Yeah, well, it's that. tough, isn't it? Imagine like losing your YouTube channel for a year or whatever. It's, yeah. Well, for you, it'd be an absolute killer. That'd but be a real relief. That would be I mean, catastrophic, be, wouldn't it? No, it would be. Yeah, but yeah, I so mean. it was nice to be back. But equally, it's, you know, a lot of the same stuff that I used to take the mick out of still goes on there. I just can't take the piss out of it anymore <laughs> for fear that I get banned again. So Has it had a positive impact on the business then to have that back? Because obviously, like I know how much how important LinkedIn's for me to earn a living. It's it's a weird one because it's a different it's a different platform now than it was a year ago and then four or five years ago. Completely different. Like they're they're making it a lot harder for you to get organic reach. And a lot of it is now sponsored people or people that they're promoting is in your feed first and not people you necessarily follow. So the platform's very different, even in the year wow. that I've been away. But it's just good to be back and good to be able to speak to some people that didn't know where to find me, I suppose. You know, they could have gone on YouTube, <laughs> but no. But yeah, but it's interesting the comments and the messages I've had privately are like, when are you going to start doing taking the piss out of entrepreneurs again? And I said, like, I can't. This isn't an environmental platform now because Microsoft have bought LinkedIn. That They don't want stuff like that. They don't really want controversial stuff. They want it to almost be professional, don't swear at each other, vanilla content, essentially. Yeah. Even some of the other creators, like, you know, we do stuff with some Dan, uh, Dan Kelsall. Even he's toned down his types of posts. Some of the people that used to get the most engagement a year ago have really diluted their message or toned it down for fear of either, if you want to call it getting cancelled, but getting banned, getting removed from the platform or having posts removed. So I think Dan said he's had 50 or 60 posts removed from LinkedIn, <laughs> which is mad, which he's putting all in a book, by the way. Is he really? Yeah. Selling it as a bestseller. No, but no, yeah, please. so it's been good in one regard, means that I can get seen by more people. Um Let's see what, how it plays out for the next sort of six months. Rock and roll. Right, well, let's go get some lunch. So we're going to yeah, do an paying. eating challenge. Yeah. I well, you, reckon you, I could you eat more ice cream saying than you. You could eat more ice cream than me. You could eat more chicken wings than me. So just line you up and I'll just do it at each one of you. I mean, it, 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 yeah, eat, eat, and, eat, eat some stuff after each. No, no I'm, I'll I'm, do I'm, each I'm one having you. a day off today. Salad. Yeah. 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 Where can, uh, I've said, we said last time, where can people find you? Views of my own and obviously LinkedIn. Yeah, so I'll announcement like i'm gonna come back to youtube i've had like 11 months off exclusive. yeah let's, for world people, exclusive if anyone's still here listen to this um that is into the kind of more entertaining stuff go watch some of mike's videos um that were done ages ago especially the if you're looking for something it's just you know short attention span this is entertaining you can watch it while you're taking <laughs> shit kind of thing go watch the entrepreneur bingo stuff because it's really funny yeah. or if you have a sense of humor like mine it's funny yeah, it's a crap. If you've got channel. a short attention span, go and check Mike out when he used to be funny. Yeah, <laughs> great that's, message. That's a, a take-home message. <laughs> <laughs> Not this shit he's pointing out now. No, but yeah, so we've decided this week, really, like, oh, I need to get back to YouTube now. I prefer doing those videos compared to some of the other vi videos that I was doing, so why not come back, do some stuff, show people some funny things about business, some of the stuff that we've invested in, some of the things that have worked, some of the things that haven't actually speak to people that know far more about this shit than I do and have been successful rather than saying crypto mining's a scam. Maybe you just did it wrong. Maybe yeah. mining Ravencoin for two years. Was the mistake. Yeah. Was the mistake. Maybe I should have been mining something else. So I want to start finding people that have started to do weird shit and made money from it. Like even you'd be like a great guest, I'd like how to monetize your YouTube channel and stuff like that. And I think, of course, mate. You've got, I'll, I'll come down anytime. It's nice being in a really professional studio for a change. Well, uh, what a hater. <laughs> yeah. I hope, that, well, those that are listening as well, that are small, if you are a, a small business owner or even a, like a, a large business owner, the views of my own thing, 15 quid a month, like so much value in that. 
uh, like I said, again, a deductible expense, but it's a really good community where you can actually learn a lot of marketing tips and tricks. I think it's, um, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Well, the weirdest thing for me was like, I thought people might think, oh, well, aren't you doing the same thing? You're getting a group and you're teaching them stuff. But it's like, I'm not making any promises. I'm not saying if you do this one thing, you're going to make a million pounds in six months. It's actually, do you want to know how I genuinely grew my audience? This is exactly what I did. Do you want to know how I backwards plans the business that I sold for yeah. 8 million quid these were the processes that I went through it's just kind of teaching you either stuff that I've done or stuff that I'm actually doing in my real business so it's almost like letting you see business in real time yeah it's one of the, it's just a, a focused place it's a bit like a, a bit like an online course in it so like for example Jesus, bear, with, bear with me on Jesus, this one Josh burying us <laughs> bear with me you could learn anything you want on YouTube from random sections of the internet from random people and try to figure out if it's like you know worth it's worth its weight and it's free that's all accessible it's consumable for free whereas if you've got like an isolated place where somebody has given you content in an order that you can consume it you yeah. pay for that value you pay for the small amount for that value but you've got it's done it's saved at years yeah. of work Do you i'd know probably I mean? sell more of them if it was 17 pound and the price ended in a seven is that what we're saying bump Def it up inflation yeah. 97 quid a month. i'm surprised you didn't do that just you know as a bit of a piss take we did that with the book Oh yeah. yeah. So it was was seven pound ninety seven is now available for ninety seven p. That's what we did. <laughs> I do hope that you, you could get more than seven followers off the back of this, and maybe a couple of van. Rows. I reckon there'll be less than seven people watching this part of the podcast. We're a long way in, aren't we? We've, we've, we've about we've, an hour and a half deep. We've, it's all. It's, I think people don't expect anything less from us. You'd be surprised how many people do listen. Well, even when it's just us idiots just chatting in a room about next week's episode, which will have already come out, is about you having an enema. So I think we're above that. Oh, I've had a... Uh, it's something about to happen after this I've episode. Had a, I've had a colonic before. Oh, yeah? Felt good for it afterwards. You're lighter as well, aren't you? Between 7 and 12 pounds you lose if you have a colonic. Really? Yeah, yeah. I probably lose about all that. Sh all that shit inside you. You should have one. There's some content. They, they, nah, they, they don't have the industrial equipment <laughs> to be able to do that, I don't think. <laughs> what, that wide? <laughs> yes. It's pretty pipe. wide. <laughs> well, on that note, let's call it a draw. It's been a pleasure. Any final comments? Uh, no, just subscribe to Breaking Bread Podcast. And if you like coffee and you don't want it too bitter <laughs> or too sweet, middle of the road, neither. These guys have got you covered. Peace. 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 <laughs>